Hi, in this tutorial for hands-on 2, I'm going to show you how to complete the hands-on exercise. Be advised that these tutorials, so the one of hands-on 2 and the rest that follow, show you only how to complete the exercises. They do not give vivid explanations for the different parameters and the concepts used for modeling. For that, please refer to the lectures. So to complete hands-on 2, firstly, we open up Chrome. Over here, we go to Open, Learn, Create. You should be familiar with this website at this point. So then we sign in. Once we sign in, we get this page as shown before. We go on My Profile, Enrollments, and we select Energy and Flexibility Modeling. So over here, we scroll down to Course Content. Scroll down to Lecture 3, and we select Hands on exercise 2. Such a PDF will open up. So, these PDFs for all the hands on exercises give you the explanations of how the hands on can be completed and what you need to do. On top of that, they give you explanations for the different parameters used. The video series that we are showing you now, so the video tutorials, will not go over these parameters. So, please look at the lectures and please look at the hands-on PDFs. So the learning outcome for this hands-on is to create a new model in sand interface, learn the main functionalities of sand interface, define the duration of time slices, add year split values, and check the depreciation method and discount values. So to start off with, we're going to create a new model. What we do is, we minimize Chrome, we go to this PC, and we go to local disk C. Now, before creating a new model, we need to create a working station where we will be completing the hands-on exercises. To do that, over here, we create a new folder. and We call this Osmosis and Flex Tool. Inside this, we create a new folder. And we call this folder HO2, which corresponds to hands-on 2. Now, every time, whenever you will be doing a hands-on exercise, please create a new folder corresponding to the hands-on. So when you do hands-on 3, create a new folder, hands-on 3. Hands-on 4, new folder, hands-on 4. Okay. So, to create the actual model, what we do is we go back, we go to Program Files, click Send, we click on the application. Over here, we click on Export Templates. So this PC, local disk C, Osmosis and Flex tool, HO2. You will get such a pop-up saying templates exported to C. Click OK. We can close this now. Then we go back onto this PC, local disk C, Osmosis and Flex tool, HO2. <coughs> So now you will notice that you have four files in the HO2 folder. So the first one, CCG Sand Interface, is where you will be putting the data for your model, defining your model in terms of technologies and commodities, and setting constraints to your model. The Osmosis code, so this is the code input that we will be putting into ClickSand in order to run the model to do the linear calculations. The results database is when we take the output of the calculations and we transform it to be used in Excel format. Results template is what uses this data, so the one transformed by results database, in order to create graphs and visualizations. 
The one that's most important is the CCG SAND interface. So, once the Excel opens up, you will get such a page. First of all, click on Enable Content. You will now see that there are four sheets attached to this page. Naming, Sets, Parameters and to Data File. The Naming Sheet provides the details of the different parameters that are used in the modeling. So, these are the names of the different parameters where you can add data and you can set constraints. Have a look at this when you're doing advanced modeling. In the early stages, most of this will not be necessary for you. On the sets sheet, so this is the place where you can define the name of your technologies, commodities and emissions. As you can see, emissions have already been defined for you. So these three columns are linked to the to data file sheet that has the format needed by the solver to find the optimal solutions. Wherever you specify a name of a technology, commodity or a mission in these, it is automatically reported in the respective cell in the two data sheet. So you have the freedom to change the name as many times as you want without losing data. So if you define a technology over here, you can change its name and data will not be lost. Be advised, however, when defining technologies and commodities, you should always be following the guidelines explained in Lecture 3. So please refer to Lecture 3 whenever you're defining any technologies. Then the third sheet is the parameters sheet. So this is a sheet where you will be adding data for each osmosis parameter. To make things easier and faster for you, there are filters at the top of the each column where you can filter out a parameter, technology, commodities. Columns K to BN is where you can insert data from 2015 to 2017. So if we scroll all the way to the right, we can see that it goes all the way up to 2017. So let's see how this works. Let's say on the parameters we want to select um, availability factor. So we click on availability factor and we click on OK. So now this brings up the availability factor for all, all the different technologies. You will use this to define the availability factor of a technology if it needs defining. We can look at something else. So let's go over here, select all and then deselect and look at the year split values. We click on OK. So now we get the year split values for the different time slices. The default values in the SAND interface is zero. So this is where you will need to add data. And we will do so at the end of the SAND zone. The fourth sheet then is the to data file. So never add any data to the to data file. Do not do anything to this sheet essentially. What it does is that everything that you define in sets and parameters is transferred here. So nothing needs to be done over here. This is just created so that the model can do the calculations based on this. So now if we go back onto the hands on. and we scroll down
on page 7 we will see the heading define the duration of time slices. Now read this very carefully as this is essential for your understanding in order to know how to define the time slices in your model. There can be variations between models depending on what country you're modeling or what region you're modeling. So you will see over here that there is a blue link saying data preparation sheet. This data preparation sheet is provided in all of the hands-on. This is just to make it easier for you in order to complete the hands-on exercises. So what do we need what we need to do now is add the year split values. For that, right click on the data preparation sheet and click on open link in new tab. <coughs> A page in Zenodo will open up. So this page contains again the instructions that we were just looking for the hands-on and if you go down you will see data prep HO2. Download this. Once it has been downloaded, open it. So, over here, we click on Enable Editing, and the first file looks like this. So what we need to do now is copy these year split values and paste them into the sand interface. So we're going to copy it from here and paste it over here. So what we do is the following. We select all of this. and then we copy it. Then what we do is we go into the sand interface, we click on column K48662 and then we cl right click it. Now when you are pasting make sure that you always select paste as values. So this option over here, you do not select paste as formulas or you do not select just paste, you select paste values. We click on paste values. So now what we need to do is paste all of this data for all the additional years. There is an easy way to do this through Excel. If you press on Control shift and the bottom arrow on your keyboard, it will select all of the data. Then we press on Control c in order to copy it then again control shift and the right arrow. Now this selects all of the other data points up to 2070. Afterwards we press on control V and all of the data has been passed on for us. Once this has been done press on control S in order to save this. After we've added the year split values, we need to check the depreciation method and the discount values. So what we do is we come onto parameter, select all, deselect all, and we scroll down until we find depreciation method and discount rate. So the depreciation method has a value of 1 and the discount rate of 0 0.1. Leave this as it is, however you might need to change this for further modeling exercises that you will need to do in the future. So keep this in mind of how this can be changed. This is the end of the hands-on 2 tutorial. Thank you for watching.